Hey, what is up guys? Speed here, and today we are looking at Team Secret versus OG. This is the series where Team Secret rolled OG. Yeah, they absolutely crushed them. Both games, I believe, were under 30 minutes. Probably gonna look at the other one soon, just because I feel like these are very notable series from Secret. They ran very weird heroes, a Bloodseeker offlane. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, OG also was running some weird stuff. We saw Huskar come back, and a lot of people were doubting the Huskar pick. They were basically getting mad at OG. They're like, OG is falling off. Typical Twitter, right, guys? It's like, OG loses a couple games. It's like, oh my god, OG has lost its vigor. Guys, these pros are not perfect. They're just human beings who sometimes get the meta right, sometimes play well, sometimes outplay their opponents, and sometimes they don't. They have ups and downs. Like, <laughs> it's just crazy to me that people think, like, you lose four games and it's just like, ah, they've lost their touch. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, whatever. Also, if you're excited for this series, uh, smash that like button, absolutely break it, break that like button, let's get it to 8,000 likes, actually 7,000 likes, alright, I don't want to go too crazy on this video, 7,000 likes, and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Did you know that Game Leap is currently 50% off? If you use the discount code DOTA50 right now, you're going to get 50% off. We don't do this all the time, and so really your best opportunity to get to the next level, to break through the current rank that you are, and start to understand Dota on a higher level is right now. So you need to click the link down below, use the code DOTA50 when you go sign up, 50% off. That's crazy. That's half off. And now let's get into the video. So let's get into the draft. First things first, I can't see the third ban. Oh wait, no, there is no third ban now. It's two, I forgot. Okay, they switched it. So they first pick Wind Ranger on Team Secret. Then OG follows up with a Oracle and an Elder Titan. And I actually really like Elder Titan right now. I think this hero is underrated, especially as an offlaner, which funny enough, OG actually was picking. And because I, I, I theory crafted it in my head a bit back, I, I saw some pub player doing it. And I'm like, okay, this seems good. I think you could do this, this, and this on it. And so I really feel like OG sees the potential in this hero. I feel like there's a lot of potential in offlane uh, ET, especially pairing it with heroes like Rubik or... Grimstroke. I really like the idea of that. But Team Secret goes for a Wind Ranger into Bloodseeker. The reason why I like these picks and openers like this is you know you're going to have a lot of control, you know you have a lot of damage, and most importantly, your roles are flexed. You don't know if Wind Ranger is 4, you don't know if she's mid, you don't know if she's 5. Same thing for Bloodseeker. You don't know if he's safe lane, mid lane, and I guess in this case, off lane. You don't know. Um, then OG goes for Oracle and ET. Oracle is very good against Wind as a heads up. The reason being is you can disarm her, which is a big deal. And you can perch your wind run, and you do magical damage. Oracle is very, very good against Wind Ranger. It's also pretty good against Bloodseeker as well, as you can ulti people that get ruptured so they can man up. So not that he knew the Bloodseeker is picked afterwards, but I think that's a pretty decent matchup. It also can go both ways. Bloodrite can zone out Oracle from very far away. It can prevent him from getting his ulti off. So that one definitely goes both ways. Et, I think they're just sticking with a game plan. Et, it's decent against Wind Ranger. There's no doubting that. Preventing her from, you know, getting away with Wind Run with like a 5 second stop is good. Now we see more bans, we see the Void ban. Reason for banning Void from Secret, just really good with Oracle and ET. Chrono is just so fantastic with these heroes. Oracle is great with Void in lane, it's so much damage, it's very hard to lane against. And you can save Void in team fights, which is a big deal, right? Void having a save is massive. Then we see the Ember ban, probably just, you know, an OG hero. Ench, Venge ban. Secret puppy heroes, uh, they just don't want them to have these heroes. And you know, Minus Armor is very good with these sort of heroes, so I think it makes sense. Then we see the Sven Ban, another good hero with ET and Oracle. Also gives them a direct stun, which they currently do not have, right? Having that just initial stun or control that Ember and Sven provides that Oracle and ET don't uh, is very strong, right? These heroes take a bit to set up their disables, which can lose you kills in certain circumstances. Then we see AA Ban. And that's just to prevent, you know, countering Oracle. And most importantly, the Huskar. They ban the AA, they pick the Huskar. That's obviously planned. That's a very clear pick. I mean, ban into pick. And a lot of people were doubting this Huskar pick. They say, why would OG pick a hero, Huskar, into potentially two counters? Because Wind Ranger and Bloodseeker both can be considered Huskar counters. Why? Because Bloodrite does pure damage. Rupture does pure damage, and you can also amp the, the Huskar to burst them. Not that you actually need to do pure damage against Huskar anymore, but it basically prevents him from regening up if you burst them. Then, Wind Ranger is good against Huskar because she does a ton of damage and has evasion, right? It's also very easy to shackle shot Huskar as he doesn't move very much, so that's not really a good matchup. But 
what people don't understand is that OG has always drafted like this, guys. They've always drafted like this. If they think the hero is good with their heroes, they will pick it. Even if they think, okay, the enemy team might have some counters here. Which, frankly, Huskar, you know, it can't go either way. You can disarm these heroes and man up to them. Especially with an Oracle. But OG has always done this. They've always done this. They pick these heroes that work well together. They know here they want to protect the Huskar. That is what Oracle and that is what ET does. They protect Huskar. And so, even if it's not a great Huskar game or the perfect Huskar game, you can enable it that way. Now, obviously, it didn't work out, but that's not necessarily just because of the pick. That could have easily be been because of play. They might have made a lot of mistakes. They might have gotten outplayed. Seeger might have just been the better team for this day. And a lot of people just like to say, oh, it's the pick. You just lost because of the pick. No! OG could pick any heroes and they would stomp any 5k team every single game. It could be literally five supports against a perfect team comp and OG would still win. Right? It's not all about picks, uh, but let's keep going. Then we see the Invoker pick, Lifestealer pick. I'm going to keep going and go a little bit faster now, but we see Invoker, Lifestealer, Lifestealer. I mean, I think it just allows them to get on top of these heroes, right? It's just solid. It's pretty decent against Huskar as well. He can't use any of his spells against you. He doesn't do much damage against you. And it allows you to finish him off. And it's just good against these heroes as well. So it makes sense. Personally, not a fan of Lifestealer at all. But it's been getting picked. So maybe I'll have to change my mind soon. Then we see the Rubik pick. And, you know, I think that's just because it's a good laner with Bloodseeker. There's some decent spells to steal. Nothing insane, really. Like, I don't want to steal Huskar spells. Not a huge fan of ET spells. Oracle spells are good. Uh, Invoker spells are good. And Grimstroke spells are definitely good. OG goes for the Grimstroke. I think the reason being for this is they just want... The Grimstroke ET lane. This is what I was talking about. So strong. You inkswell up this Elder Titan when he has a bunch of damage. Bada bing, bada boom. They're slowed. They're stunned. They're getting hit for 150 damage and they're dead. Uh, now the game didn't exactly play out that way, but yeah, let's get into it. All right. So one thing I definitely want to put a bit of attention onto is Bloodseeker. This is a hero. Obviously, I've been hyping up for a bit now. The, the hero has been pretty trash, but I always feel like it's very close to having a lot of potential. This is a hero that I just see with potential. Why? Because Blood Rite is a ridiculous spell. Kind of always has been. And most importantly, Thirst, you just stand in range of creeps and you heal, which is very good. Like, you're a good laner. Also, you have 300 base movement speed, you have 61 base damage and 5 base armor, which just means that you're strong in lane. Now, you can see here, right off the bat, what he does is he nukes the range creep. If you're going to play this hero, you kill the range creep as soon as possible. This is going to allow you to pressure the opponent only, you know, a bit later. And really, this is all you do with Bloodseeker. You use the blood right to zone people out, secure a bunch of creeps, and then if they overcommit in the blood right, you man up, right? And that's kind of a rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, right? He does it once again with this creep. Unfortunately, he gets denied. Probably blood right a little bit early there. But hey, the point stands. He's trying to push the wave so that his Rubik can trade properly. Anytime you push in the creep wave before the opponent does, you can trade better. That's how Dota works. And so anytime you have nukes, you should be using them a lot, right? Regardless of your hero, as he does it again there. So upcoming here, we're going to see the strength of the Bloodseeker. I also want to talk about how Zai plays this. Every little thing counts. So first things first, he has a wand. He clearly just wants to man up. He has very man up items. Mangoes, very fires, a lot of regen. And level 2 blood, right? And this is what you want to do. Do not take your Q. A lot of people, I know they're like, ah, it's 15%. I have to take it. It's so much. No, you need to actually sustain. You'll have no health if you try to do this. So he drops the W. And because the Husker is going to run away, he can man up. Now, what Min 1 should have considered here. Even though it's hard, he should have considered just manning up here, right? Because if he mans up here, Zai starts tanking the creeps. Now, Zai has 7 armor, so it's really not that good. But still, that's an option. If you can't get out of the blood rate, sometimes you need to just man up. Uh, even though that's not a great option. Now, in this case, Min 1 actually does get out of it, so it's not too bad. And really, all Zai does is just man up. And this is why Rubik's really good. He helps you man up. He allows you to close the gap, and they pick up a kill. Also, with the second blood rate, they pick up the kill onto No-Tail as well and pop the south and this is literally all you do on bloodseeker you just spam blood right i'm not kidding this is fundamentally the only really the major advantage of this hero the fact that he heals and has a low damage nuke it's like you have a constant bottle because your spell costs no mana you buy a wand you have infinite health and you rinse repeat rinse repeat now let's look at the cs of the other lane so currently zai is doing the best mid is about even looks like nisha is winning slightly yeah slightly the niche is winning slightly. It is a Wex Invoker coming out from Topson, which makes sense. Their entire team comp revolves around this Huskar. That's what it does. And that is why a lot of people are like, oh my god, you know, why would you pick Huskar? It's because they, they design a draft around Huskar. And that's what OG does. And frankly, it's it's helped them win TIs. So, like, it, remember guys, remember when they were first picking PL and TI? 
Not a lot of teams were doing that. Teams started doing it later into the tournament. They started copying OG. But no joke, that's what was happening, right? That's largely what was happening. They were just picking PL first. They would babysit it, and that was their strat. And people didn't know what to do. They would try to counter it, but OG knew how to play around those heroes. And that is how you can become good at Dota. Instead of always focusing on exactly what hero to pick, and all the counters, which are frankly very hard to remember, what you do instead is you design your playstyle around heroes. You learn how to play heroes properly, well, how to play around heroes, and that can make you uh, just good at Dota. Like, I can play Profit against any hero mid and do fine, as long as the enemy mid laner isn't Topson, you know? The next thing I'd like to mention that really comes into play here, and I'll move on to mid-game fights in a little bit, so stay with me, but I really feel like this Chen pick is just still so good. Headdress on this hero is just, it's still ridiculous, and it, it just hasn't really been nerfed. It's not nearly as good as it used to be. I think it used to be 2 regen per second on level 1. Now it's 1.25. But the thing is, with a headdress, you're still amping your, your life healer's regen by an absurd amount, right? Right now, I don't think he has a tango going, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's unfortunately bugged, so it's hard to tell. But you can see his HP regen currently is 15. 15! Like, you barely can harass him. He's also healing through his W, and typically this ET Grimstroke lane that can just body anyone. Like, imagine if this is a PA with an AA. Like, something like that, or, you know, even a PA with a Grimstroke. They would run out of health. They would just simply run out of health. But Matumbaman is just regening, like, 100 health every 20 seconds. And, yeah, all this harass that an ET and, you know, Grimstroke lane typically could do is just countered out. That's where I think Seeker really does read into what OG's doing and drafts really well, you know, heroes that work well together. Because I think Lifestealer Chen just are fantastic together. Just kind of gives you this very clear goal in the lane. Like, what do you do together? And that is sustain the lane and win the CS battle. Now, there was actually points in the game where the Elder Titan of Seb was zoning out Matama Man pretty hard. Now, he was just never shutting down Matama Man in terms of CS. I feel like something, another thing that Secret did well is never allowing a pull. Matama Man never, at any point in this game, to be clear, guys, never, and this is a big point to note, had to lane here, right? I'm sorry, he never had to walk up to here. He never had to lane underneath their tower, none of that. And why is that? It's because Puppy didn't let them, right? In the entire lane, he never allowed them to pull. He can test pulls consistently, and because of that, they're able to give Matoma Man a solid game. Now, in this next fight here, I want to take an outwards look, or, you know, a bird's eye view, even though Dota already is bird's eye view, a even more bird's eye view of this fight. Now, it looked like it was going pretty well for OG. So, they get gone on here. Now, they get the Oracle ulti off, right? OG clearly was in position. They were sort of ready for this. They expected it. But there's one major thing that I, I think really happens in this fight. Well, there's two major things. And it's really the positioning of the Chen, number one. The positioning of the Chen is very important. And then also largely uh, the item builds that the Lifestealer goes and the timing and just how farmed the Absor is. Like, and this is why just becoming so farmed and stealing the right spells is game changing. He clearly stole this Inkswell earlier and it's a maxed out Inkswell. Maxed. It's brutal how strong this Rubik is right now. He is by far, and I mean this, okay, I shouldn't say by far, but he is the strongest hero in this fight. I, I really believe that. He is stronger than the life stealer. Now, every hero is integral to this fight, but you can see the Chen here. He can walk in, and immediately, Soxa, he doesn't want to walk through the Chen creeps, so he has to go out of the fight, right? He can't get a good W off onto the Wind Ranger or onto the Rubik, because clearly he'd want to silence someone like the Rubik who can't deal with the bug. The Oracle is kind of under farm, so he can't get into the fight either. And most importantly, look at these, these items. So he has an armlet, phase, PMS, uh, just a bunch of small items. So instead of going for some like Midas build, where he can't contribute, he goes this early game fighting build, which is going to prevent the Huskar from coming online because he's just so strong early on where they can fight. And now this Godding swell happens, right? And they stay together. The biggest thing that Secret is so good at, that pub players are so bad at, is staying together. They stay together. So right here, Matumba Man had the option to just easily kill the Grimstroke. Now, why doesn't he? There's two main reasons. It's because he does not want to split up from his team. He wants to stay close to his team so that, you know, they can help each other. And most importantly, the Grimstroke is useless at this point. He has one spell remaining. That's it. You know, they'll come off cooldown eventually, but it's not nearly as important to kill him, you know, rather than this ET who uh, does quite a bit of damage and has the drums for his team. So because of that, Mothelma Man's able to stay in the fight. He does an absurd amount of damage and Soxa tries to go into help, but there's nothing he can do. He ends up going down as well. And eventually they collapse, right? They collapse. Gap Spore gets a really nice fade bolt onto the Huskar. He also steals Purifying Flames level 3, and they win the fight.
and that's largely because they stayed together. OG, though, they got kind of split up. They had two heroes here, they had an Oracle here, a Huskar here, and they kind of got pincer, right? The Lifestealer just cut them off. And, you know, that's a really cool thing about Dota. Another interesting thing about this game was the fact that this Bloodseeker is just such a good hero against Huskar um, in ways that I didn't expect. Even here, you can see where the Huskar is. So, Secret can know, just straight up know, what mid one is doing. Basically, at all times, because anytime he's jungling, he's going to drop low on HP. That's what Huskar does. And therefore, they get the thirst and they get vision of him, which is really fascinating. Now, at this point in the game, it's just... OG was really just getting picked apart, uh, and really this is why I think this Lifestealer pick made a lot of sense for them. It protected their other heroes, right? It protected their other heroes. They have a lot of squishy backliners, and therefore it really made sense what they were doing. So in this fight, you can see here Matumba Man just goes in. He goes on to Topson, who theoretically can not solo kill. Uh, the Oracle doesn't ulti him. A lot of people might complain, but he does not want to ulti Topson. He needs it for the Huskar. That's their win condition, ultiing Huskar. Uh, now, that doesn't work out. They try to go in here, but unfortunately, the Infest from Matumba Man comes out. That's where it's not picks. That was Matumba Man being a god tier player, dodging the Ink Spell with his Infest. They get the ulti onto mid one, but he's getting absolutely shredded uh, by the Wind Ranger, as you can see here. She's just tearing into him. And yeah, the, the, the chance to sustain is also insane. Like, look at the HP of Secret. They take no damage. Like, their lowest HP hero is a Bloodseeker. That's it. They take no damage. It's insane. They, so they have the mech. They have a Veil on Bloodseeker. It's ridiculous. There's no way you fight into them at this point of the game. Now, if we look at, at OG's items now, they're very under farm. They got Stomp. They do have the drums, which is important. But that's it, right? That's the only aura item they have. They don't have something like the Veil. They don't have the mech, right? They don't have these items that win these fights. Right? These items are so important. Nisha, with one mech in Hand of God, it, that's like half of his health. And it was game-changing here. And really, let's take a look at one more major fight before we end off the video. So in this case, OG knows they're coming. They see them. <laughs> like, they're running through a creep wave, but they don't care. I mean, partially because this Wind Ranger is 2,500 max HP uh, with the Infest of the Lifestealer and an Essence Ring. It's pretty funny, but he's going to Power Shot. So he leads with the Power Shot. This is very important because it actually gives vision of this area. It tells them, you know, where people are. Now, OG in this case was a little bit separated, but you can see they make the enemy team panic. Right, they make the enemy team panic. They go on this Huskar, who, you know, typically you don't want to go on, but they're so far ahead. So they go on this Huskar, and then it's important to see what they do next. So they go on him. The Life Stealer continues to go in. They back out on these heroes, and look where the rest of their team is. So far back. And this is perfect positioning. Right, perfect is relative, but, you know, it's it's so important to see how good this positioning is. So they go on on the Life Stealer, who has the Aegis, which means that he can frontline, he's disrupting the fight, and he's preventing any any movement. They can't get off a good Soulbind, they can't get any good Tornado, there's no stomp potential, there's nothing. OG can't cast their spells, and in pubs, the reason why teams throw is because they run up a high ground like this, as 5 heroes, they get 5-man stomped and the 5-man splitter, and they die. This is why Secret is so good. They don't split too much, you can see they have this really nice formation where they can't get stomped, they have their Aegis hero on the front, who's obviously going to pick on the Oracle, which is the most important. They force the Invoker to... to go in, and then when the Invoker is forced to go in, they collapse. I'm going to play it one more time from this perspective. The Invoker obviously wants to cast the spells. He wants to Alacrity up the the Huskar, but a god tier blood right from uh, Zai. This blood right was so good. I'm going to go back one more time. But this was a perfectly placed blood right. It just completely cuts off any sort of help, which is why... <laughs> like, look at this blood right. It's brutal. Thompson gets hit by it. Seb actually accidentally gets hit by it as well. Keep in mind, that's a six second silence, by the way. Six, then yeah, it, it separates mid one. These two heroes get silenced. He wants to help, but he's completely silenced, which I don't even know if you realized. And yeah, now he's he's just dead. And that's the value of Bloodseeker as well. It just isolates everyone, and eventually they stay together. You see, no one's overextending, no one's chasing. They stay together. You notice how the Life Stealer doesn't chase these two backliners? He chased the Oracle early on. That's because he has Rage and an Aegis, but he never would chase further than that. And now they stay together, they stay all within the Chen Aura. Another Blood Rite from the Bloodseeker. Eventually they're gonna uh, look to chase more heroes down. I think Nisha finds this kill if I'm not mistaken. No. Okay. And yeah, that, that's honestly why Seeker's so good. It, it's just all this small stuff, right? It's the small stuff that's hard to see. It's the small stuff in the lane. It, it's like every time Zai casts Blood Rite, he does it properly. Every CS they get in the lane, how they pressure, how they... Like, that's what makes you a good Dota player, which is why when you analyze Dota, it's hard because in order to analyze it at a high level, you really have to look at every point in the game. Like that last fight, 
you can't just look at the drafting phase and say they should have picked a different hero and they would have won. No, you have to say like, maybe they could have pulled better, right? Maybe they could have itemized differently. Maybe they could have switched up how their lanes played. And there's so many questions to ask uh, that these pro teams are always asking. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this gives you some cool perspectives. Uh, if it did, let me know. Like, subscribe, and buy a game leap sub. And I'll see you in the next one. I hope this makes you more broken. And peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general, and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there. And generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end. Because a lot of people just watch five minutes. They skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below. Do not forget 50% off on the Game League website right now if you want to become broken. Absolutely broken. Go sign up right now. So I'll see you guys there. And peace.